up and walk. And I'm going to use for a one line that you did for just for the day, contention in the midst. Contention in the midst. When we have contention in the midst, it distorts unity. We don't have to show the contention outward, but the contention with the Pharisees and the Sadducees were going through were on the inside. And sometimes internal contention is worse than external. Are you hearing me? Sometimes we play it out real slow and real low on the exterior, but on the inside, amen, it is critical, it is eating us up, and we disagree with what anybody is saying. So here it is now, they heard what Jesus said, thy sins are forgiven you, and now they can they arise contention among them in their minds and heart. They totally this Jesus for what he was saying. How many of us have been this because what we have said from the word of God? Amen. But notice, when contention is in the midst, you will miss the point. You will miss the food. You will miss the nourishment what Jesus is saying. Watch this now. Instead of the Pharisees and the Sadducees Sit there and say, mm, he's saying thy sins were forgiven thee. Okay, this must be the Son of God. They should be racing in their heart, this must be the Son of God. Because if he can forgive sins, then only God can forgive sins. So this must be the Messiah. Amen. But no. They went totally against what Jesus said. Amen? Notice, when contention is in the midst, that means you can be there on the sideline, but not there hearing and under the word. What are you saying, Pastor Noah? When Jesus share, was sharing, thy sins are forgiven thee. Amen? When he said, is it easy to say? Notice now, they picked up on that. That means they were there not to be a part, but they were there in the midst to see what accusation they can bring against him. So from the beginning, when they got there, they didn't come with good intentions. Amen? So contention in the midst, amen, contention means heated disagreement, where they were so hot in their minds, what Jesus was saying uh, 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 to the paralytic man, amen, rather than praising God, they went in opposition against him. Watch this now, watch this now. So here it is now, when you go opposite against God, that means you are on the outside you sitting on the side rather than being under what are you saying watch this now when jesus went to uh, mary and martha's house according to luke chapter 10 mary sit at the feet of jesus but martha amen amen did not sit at the feet of jesus why is the support what's the difference when you sit under the word, Mary give her full attention to Jesus, what Jesus was saying. So when Jesus uttered the words, the words came out of his mouth and fell over Mary, into Mary. But Martha, when you sit on the side, Instead of sitting under the word because of contention, you can miss the word. Amen. So here it is. Martha was so busy doing what she was doing, serving others, serving tables, rather than sitting 
under the word at the feet of Jesus, amen, then she began to get contention in her heart and say, Jesus, come and tell Mary to help me. You see, when contention is in the heart, rather than sitting under the word or uh, sitting, on, sitting on the side of the word, you will miss it. So what are you saying? It's important not to have contention in the midst. Contention will divide unity. Can you imagine a group of people together? And when, because I disagree, I disagree to disagree, and I will share it with others, I will convince others. So now here it is, we have division in the midst. So here it is now, through your thoughts, accepted in your hearts, and Jesus perceived what they were doing, what they were processing in their minds. So watch this. So watch this. Look what Jesus said. So in spite of that, contention in the midst, look what he did. He said, is it easier to say, take up that, that sense of forgiving thee, or to say, rise up and walk. Which one is easier? Amen. He asked them that question. And notice, this is amazing. The people who are around, except the Pharisees and the Sadducees, did not know what Jesus was talking about because they were thinking this inward. And sometimes it is good to expose contention when it's in the midst. The only way we can expose contention when it's in the midst is through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you imagine you being in a prayer meeting setting? And my God, I've been in, in many prayer meeting uh, uh, setting experience, the presence of the Lord. Now watch this. And the Holy Spirit will speak and say, some of your mind is not on me. My God, let me tell you something. That'll cause, that'll cause you want to, 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 to scream. That'll cause you want to shout. And you begin to ask the question, Lord, is it I? When you are exposed through the Holy Spirit, amen, contention will disappear from the midst, amen. Can you imagine those of us who sit on the platform or those of us who congregate, even like this morning, congregating in the local assembly and their minds are wavering they are there, the body are there, but their minds are wavering. And Jesus will speak through the power of the Holy Spirit and say the number of people in here, give the exact number, and say your mind is not set on me. That means now you are there, but you are sitting on the side rather than sitting under. Are you hearing me? When you sit under the word, Things will happen. So Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and he said, now watch this now. And he said, man, your sins are forgiven. Great God from Zion. I love this. I love this. Thy sins are forgiven. Take up your bed. That same bed where they brought you on take it up watch this now here it is those powerful words the paralytic man was under the power of christ heard what he said amen he rise up not only rise up he bent down great god from zion watch the action Take up that bed, roll it up. Now watch this. The Pharisees still there. The Sadducees still there. All those people around who was crowded around from the doors on the outside, looking through the windows, watching the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. The man rolling up his cut. Can you imagine what they were saying in their mind? What is 
this. Can you imagine what the Pharisees used to sing? Look at this. Now watch this now. Here it is. What gets me excited now? While he was demonstrating this, what do you think those four other men was doing? Watching from the top of the roof, looking down, amen, watching their brother standing up and rolling up the couch, the couch where they brought him on. Amen. It's like angels in heaven watching the Holy Spirit doing its work among us, great God from Zion, moving contention, moving hatred, moving everything that will hinder us from being united, uh, from being one, so the Holy Spirit will be able to move and move freely and usher that atmosphere from heaven down to earth. Great God from Zion. Amen. So here it is now. Verse 24. But, thou, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins. Now they know the Son of Man has power to forgive sins. So right there and then their thoughts should have been renovated. Yes. They should have said, yes, this is the Son of God. This is the Messiah that was promised. Let us accept him. But no, 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 they still didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah or the Son of God. Immediately he took up his bed and he, Jesus said to him, go to your house. Can you imagine that? I can visualize those five men. I believe those four who was up on top of that roof came down so far they didn't know when they got down rejoicing with the one, with the man who was paralyzed, the man who was paralyzed. Now he couldn't get in. Now he can get out. He moved his way out through the midst, through the door, glorifying God. Right then he didn't care what they was thinking. All he knew once he was paralyzed, now he is whole. And that's exactly what Jesus came to do, to make us whole, to make us complete body, soul, and spirit. Amen. Can you rejoice with, the, with one when one is on the bed of affliction and they are healed through the power of God, through the mercies of God, we will rejoice with them and say glory to God in the highest because here it is, the Holy Spirit has moved among us once again. Verse 26, it says, and they were all amazed and glorified God. I wonder if the Pharisees and the Sadducees were there. And believe you me, according to the word, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they came from all around, from Galilee, Jerusalem, Judea, all around. And they were there in the presence of Christ. In his presence, but out of his presence. Can you imagine that? Because they didn't accept him as the Messiah. But those who saw what Jesus did began to rejoice. Amen. They began to glorify God. Now, this is what they say. Look what he said. They began to glorify God, and they were filled with fear. That means not fear, not scared, not being afraid of God. That means they were filled with reverence for God. When we enter into his presence, when we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we ought to come in his presence, his presence with fear, with reverence to God. Amen saying, look what they said, we have seen strange things today. What? We have seen strange things today. When we are one in the spirit, my brothers and my sisters, we will see strange things. Now they have called, watch this now, the man taking up his bed, rolling it up in the front of them, walking out, amen, who was brought down through the roof, amen, by his friends, 
Now, walking out, glorifying God, they call that strange things because it's, an, it's something out of the norm. But uh, my brothers and my sisters, um, let me share this with you. When we come as one as you, in the Lord, we will see strange things. Are you hearing me? We will see strange things. Now one may say, but brother Lord, it's tough to get everybody together. But listen, God will move on our behalf because of our faith when we are excommunicated out like the woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8 and 43. She was excommunicated from the community, from her family, because she had an issue of blood. Now, when you have been put out, amen, let me tell you something. You're still there with God. You're still there. Your presence can still meet the Holy Spirit. So when she had that issue, she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. She didn't supposed to be among them, but she pushed her way through. Here it is again, like the men, those four men who went up on the roof, put the paralytic man before Jesus, they didn't stop. They went at all costs. The women pushed her way through at all costs. How much, how bad, how frequently we want to be united as one in the spirit so we can see strange things. So here it is. She pushed her way through, touched the hem of his garment, and Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? <clears throat> Once the Lord always pressing you and you asking who touched you. And here it is. The woman came forward. Great God from Zion. When you have to be united, sometimes you got to be united by yourself. When you're alone, you have to be united by yourself, body, soul, and spirit. When you go before the Lord, you unite your soul and spirit, and you trouble the throne of grace, and the Lord will open up the windows of heaven, and he will pour down his manifold blessings upon us. Amen? When you are united, united, we will see strange things. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, here it is, the 11 men was doing exactly, following exactly the command of God. Jesus said, go into Jerusalem and tarry until you be endured with power from on high. Now watch this now. All they were told that by Jesus, they went there, but nothing happened. This is important. Nothing happened until they came on one accord. They had to wait. No doubt they had contentions among them. But until that contention is washed away, until that contention is squashed from our heart, squashed from our spirit, squashed from our soul, nothing will happen. Amen. Why do you think the enemy works so hard among husband and wife? So contention can be among them. Amen. So your prayers can be hindered. Great God from Zion. The husband mad, upset with the wife, and the wife upset with the husband. Then you went to pray. Oh, no, 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 no. Contention is in the midst. You have to reconcile. Then come back. And go before the Lord. Why do you think the enemy have contention in the midst of families? So that the blessings, the manifold blessings in which God has restored, want to bestow upon that family. Let me tell you, the enemy don't want to see strange things happening through the Holy Spirit among that family or among God's family. The enemy always want to keep contention in the midst. So can you imagine what will happen if God's people who name the name of Christ, if families get together as one and unite as one in the spirit, I say strange things will happen. Things will happen that you've never seen before. Is that possible? Yes, because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly that we may ask or think. But here it is. 
these 11 men, 11 apostles, waiting, waiting, waiting to be endured with power. But when they came on one accord, great God from Zion, on one accord, the Holy Spirit was descended from heaven and filled, it came down like a mighty rushing wind and filled the house. And when they filled the house, those who were on the outside looking in, hearing these men speaking in tongues, he said, look here, these men are drunk. That means they, strange things was happening among them. So they said they were drunk. Great God from Zion. But when Peter heard what they were saying, Peter stood up. Great God from Zion. He said, these men are not drunk, as you suppose, as you meditating in your mind, as you discussing, as you agree among yourself. We are not drunk. Strange things are happening because what? Because we are fulfilling the mandate of the promise that our creator, our savior, our master, the one who died and rose on the third day and told us all power is given unto him in heaven and on earth. But go tarry until you be endured with power from on high. And the Holy Spirit came down and filled the house. And they spoke with other tongues in the midst Strange things could happen. Don't say, well, God can do this. This thing's supposed to happen. Let me tell you something. God will do things beyond our wireless imagination. Because what, you, what the word said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared for us, his children. Great God from Zion. That's how we would know that God is in our midst when strange things happen. Do I have to be there for strange things to happen? We can agree, even on this platform, we can agree together in the spirit. That's why be agreeing together is so powerful in the spirit because the natural man is moved out of the place and the spirit man take over and we unite together in the spirit because God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Great God from Zion, I'm looking forward. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to see strange things happening in the midst. Many men are be able to withstand it. Many be able to, to run out of the midst and say strange things is happening there. On the hand, work is happening there. But my brothers and my sisters, when strange things is happening, the Holy Spirit is moving. No one can counteract. No one can move. No one can decipher. No one can stop when the Holy Spirit begins begins to move because when the Holy Spirit began to move, strange things will happen when contention is moved out of its place. So here it is, Faith National, before we leave the platform and reassemble ourselves, we have something to think about. Can we, can we, great God from Zion, Eliminate contention out of our midst. Can we? Listen, when we refuse to allow contention to leave us, you know what happened? That means we involve ourselves with self. And when self take over, Great God from Zion. Nothing will happen in your presence because God will not work in self. God will not work through us while we are in self. But when we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit, and self is out of the way, then 
God have the clearance and he will take pleasure and working through us. My God. Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. Strange things is happening. Look around us. Have we ever met before <laughs> on the platform? We used this kind of time. We would have been as as assembled together in one place. But what God did, 2020 will always be a year to remember God had done some strange things. He allowed this pandemic to come and affect the entire world. That's strange. That's strange. Now the question you may ask, what we are going through, what we are seeing, is it because God is angry with us? And the wickedness had come up before him. We don't want to make God angry. Because in the Genesis of time, in Genesis 6, 5 to 14, he said, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth. And that every intent of the thoughts, look what it say, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Right back again, the Pharisees, where Jesus addressed the thoughts in their hearts. Here it is again. Wickedness comes from the thought of the heart. We will not do wickedness unless our heart agrees to do it. We will not carry it through. We will not follow it through. We will not accept Christ unless our heart submit to it. And say, so look, Jesus is the way, the only way. Our heart have to be submissive. Even when we go in prayer, our heart have to be submissive to him. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. Now we are moving in another area when unity is at its worst. It moves God. When unity is at its worst, it moves God. Great God from Zion. So here it is, God saw in the genesis of time. Man, thoughts of his heart was evil continually. We can trace back even from the day. Why this is happening. How this came about. Because the word of God shared with us. Did not leave us ignorant, but the God had allowed man to pen it on paper so you and I will know. Watch this. He said, I will destroy. Now, only a God can say this. One may have the nuclear button to their disposal, but they can destroy the earth. Only one super being can destroy the earth. It's the one who owns it. That's God Almighty. He is the creator. He is the orchestrator. And he's the only one can destroy it. He was the only one who, who was qualified to say in, in, in Genesis 
6 and 7, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Who other than God can say that? I. Only God one can say that. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Not only man, but beasts and creeping things, birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made, I repented that I made them. But thanks be unto God. In the midst of all the chaos, God found someone who he saw grace in his eyes. Verse 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Read God from Zion. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And because of no, watch this. Because of no, I'm going to say this and you check it out. That's how come we are here today. We came from the generation extension of no. And his family. Because what God did, God wipe out man, woman, boys, girls, animal, creeping things, birds of the air, except those that he had secured in the ark. That's why it's good to be under than on the side. Those who are under the shelter of the ark were saved by God's grace. Those who are under the blood of Jesus will be saved by God's grace. Watch this. Now we're going into a devastation when we can see generation upon generation the creator Great God from Zion, who was very patient with us. But as the generation came on stream, and even now there are many generations who don't want nothing to do with Jesus. They will acknowledge that there is a God. Whether it's a capital G or a small G, they will acknowledge that there is a God. But even now in some local assembly, they don't want to acknowledge that there is a man called Jesus who had redeemed us through his flesh and blood. But remember, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In order to get to my Father, you've got to come through me. So when we walk through the door, which is Jesus, we under the protection of the Father. Great God from Zion. Don't you want to be under? Then on the side? When we're on the side, that means we want to do anything we want to do. But when we get in trouble, we want to turn to Jesus and say, Lord, help me. No, 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 no. Come under the blood. Come under his word. Come under the shelter. Come under the ark. Brother, where's the ark today? The ark is Jesus. Come inside. Come inside. And what boggles my mind in my closing? You mean to tell me that all those family was on the face of the earth? There was only one family 
One man that pleased God. Great God from Zion. Great God from Zion. Lord, help us. So my question to me today and to you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Have God found grace? Have God found grace? I'll say it again. Have God found grace in his eyes upon us? Though Jesus had died, but many have not yet come under the shelter. Under the shelter, there's unity. There is peace. There is joy. There is an atmosphere that is unusual because strange things will happen. Great God from Zion. Go on now. Because there were unity in the wrong direction. Sin in the midst. God had destroyed the ice. And kept one family. Verse 13. Verse 12. So God looked upon the ice. And indeed it was corrupt. Lord, what are you saying now? When you look down upon us on this earth, what are you saying? Oh, God, have mercy upon us. I pray today when you look down upon us that there is a few of us or many of us or united together. And we will find grace in the eyes of the Lord. What is he saying? And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through the earth. And behold, he said, behold. He said, look. You will see. I will destroy them with the earth. You know the story quite well. What happened after that? Man, God rained down judgment upon the face of the earth. Destroy man, animal, bird, except those who he secured under the wings in the earth. While the door is open, Jesus said, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I can make them white. As the come on, let's talk it over. I am the way. Before my father closed the door and sent me on the clouds of glory to take the church home, he said, come, let us talk it over. Because the word God has made the covenant, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Man will be united doing what they want to do. Doing things that is unseen. But there will be a group and there will be a few 
who found the narrow way that leads to life eternal. Hallelujah. They will enter into the pleasure and the presence of Almighty God. But this time, Noah had to make himself an ark. But what God did, God made us an ark. You and I don't have to labor for nothing this time. There's no laboring to build nothing. No, this time, oh no, it will not be no flood. God would allow his son to come on the portals of glory to take his children home. Three stories high. 45 feet. 450 feet long great God from Zion. That's what the dimension of the security was. But this time it's for whosoever will. Let him come. Take off the water of life free. Enter under his wings. Enter under his word. Let us prepare to get out of here before God read his judgment upon the earth. God left a sign for us to always be remembered. He said, I'm going to put a sign, or I'm going to put a sign in the clouds that those who are on the earth will remember it's me, my covenant I made with my son. I will not destroy mankind with water no more. No, I will not do a thing. But this time, it will be different. My brothers and my sisters ask you going into the area to recognize that on this earth after the flood, after knowing the history would have happened, did man change? No. No. This unity was still among men. And unity that came together in a negative way out of the covenant of God, it moved him. We will continue and bring this to a close next week in the will of the Lord. And we can decide for ourselves Am I going to be in unity? in a positive way so God can move in our midst? Or am I going to be in unity in a negative way to experience the wrath of God? I pray may God bless you. May God keep you as you meditate upon these words as we stay under the shadow of his face. God, our Heavenly Father, I thank you this day that you had granted us another privilege, Lord, to come upon this platform to share your word. God, as we reflect our mind back of what you have done, oh God, when your people unite together, it pleases you in such a way. Lord, as you look down upon us on this earth, the way you have looked down upon the children of men. Oh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you will find us worthy, find us righteous, find us holy.
through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making the way. Lord God, as we're about to go through this week, I pray that you will continue to be with us. And as your people continue to unite in the spirit, Lord, I know you will not only hear, but answer our prayer. We thank you. We glorify you. And no other name. But in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.